I'm John Skinner, and this supports Chapter 11 in my book, Fishing the Bucktail, and the book covers bucktailing for a variety of species, from surf, kayak, and boat. Okay, I'm in the ocean, uh, roughly two miles offshore, and I'm in deep enough water here that I have time to get a drink of water while my rig is making its way down to the bottom. Uh, I'm in about 70 to 75 feet of water, and I'm asked frequently whether the light tackle fluke bucktailing techniques that I cover both in my videos and in my books, whether that technique works well in the ocean and deeper water, 50, 60, 70 feet. So I'd like to address that in this video. So I'm using the same gear that uh, I would normally use in shallower water, like in Long Island Sound. I've got a 7-foot Tsunami bait casting rod. Uh, it's a classic series rated 10 to 20 pound test line. A Quantum Accurus reel spooled with 15 pound test spider wire stealth braid. On the bottom I've got an ounce and a half uh, SNS bucktail and about a foot above that I have a 3.0 Gamagatsu bait holder hook and uh, both the jig and the hook are tipped with 4 inch Berkeley Gulp Alive swimming mullets. On my YouTube channel I have separate videos showing the tackle in detail as well as the rigging instructions. And the objective here is rapid vertical jigging with as light a weight bucktail as you can use and still stay near the bottom. So this technique works very well in deeper water, uh, but it's very important that you match the jigs to the conditions. So we're going to look at the jigs in detail in a second. Uh, yeah, these are very calm conditions, the drift is slow. Alright, if we start with the bucktails to the right. Uh, there's three bucktails, all from SNS bucktails. Three quarter, one ounce, ounce and a half. These are the bucktails that I normally use, uh, especially Long Island Sound in the bays. The three quarter ounce would be in the bay. The one ounce is really the sweet spot for me in the sound, and when things get a little windy, I'll go up to the ounce and a half. Now, the conditions for this video are uh, quite calm. I'm using the ounce and a half bucktail, the SNS one uh, ounce and a half. Now, if there was some wind, if the drift was faster, then we'd have to use something to get down to the bottom, stay near the bottom. The problem is when you get heavier bucktails, a lot of them have hooks that are too big for fluke fishing. The bucktails on the left, uh, the blue frog bucktails, the tidal tails, these are made especially for fluke. They have hooks that are uh, appropriate for fluke fishing. And above that, another great option for getting down deep, the fluke balls made by Tsunami. Two ounce and three ounce, but again, they have hook sizes that are appropriate for fluke fishing. And Tsunami makes those fluke balls all the way up to 8 ounces, but again, with the right size hooks for this kind of fishing. And J&H Tackle in Oakdale, Long Island carries all of that except for the tidal tails. I don't think they have those in stock. Uh, they also have the rod and the reel that I'm using. A key to this kind of fishing is to use very thin line. As I mentioned, I'm using 15 pound test braid. Now, this is a decent fish, and uh, it's going to take some nice runs. A smooth drag is real important. There it goes. It's going to take some some good charges to the bottom.
All right, so even though this is obviously a calm day, uh, the waves, it's like a swell two to three feet, so there's still a fair amount of uh, up and down vertical movement. And uh, so you feel this when you're jigging because you know, suddenly you feel slack, and you know, that's when I feel slack in Long Island Sound where it's you know, dead flat usually. Um, you know, I set the hook right away because that's a fish, but here it's different. Uh, it could mean that you know the kayak or boat is just descending. So it takes a little more um, uh, awareness to stay in contact with the jig. And the other thing is when you've got this much line out, uh, often you end up getting a little bit of scope, a little bit of angle in the line. And uh, it's important to um, you know have a little bit of force to the jigging so make sure you keep that action on the lure and uh, the other real important thing is to, uh, it's always important to get a good hook set, but I think with all this extra line out, uh, certainly need a sharp hook set. And normally I'd use the net for this, but I've, I've got enough uh, fish in the boat. I really don't need to keep this one if, if I don't want to. If I lost it, not a problem. Yeah, that's a good one. Now, if there was more wind and a faster drift and I had to go up to, uh, let's say, 3 ounces, then I'd be looking to beef up the tackle a little bit. Uh, go to 20 pound test spray, go to a rod that could handle the weight a little bit better. So like anything else, this technique has its limitations. If it was really windy and deep and, and fast moving currents, uh, this may not cut it. And you may have to use a heavy sinker conventional tackle with bait. Um, but under many circumstances, this is just a great way to catch fish. So prior to this particular season, I was using six-foot rods for this kind of fishing, and they had shorter butts. And uh, this season, I'm using the longer seven-foot rods, and they have a longer butt. And boy, what a difference. It's so much more comfortable. Uh, you know, I've got that butt tucked up against my body, um, and it just gives me a lot of leverage cranking the fish up. And the other thing is, with the longer rod handle, you can um, put that up against your forearm, and it just makes for a very convenient powerful one-armed hook set. Alright, we'll finish up with this. Uh, so, if you fluke fish a lot, you can always tell when you have a fluke as opposed to another kind of fish because they've got these very distinctive head shakes. And certainly I felt the head shakes. I was 100% sure I had a fluke here. But there was a lot of weight too, so I thought I might have had a decent fluke. and. Uh, not the case. I did have a fluke. It was on the top hooks. That's why I felt the head shakes so clearly. Uh, but then underneath was this troublemaker. So, oh well. Alright, I hope you found this video useful. And if you enjoy these videos, please subscribe to my channel.